This is GS Math Smart, and we're here today with another brand new tutorial. And actually, we can't really call this a tutorial. I'll call this more of an introduction rather than a tutorial, because we aren't going to be teaching anything here. But uh, we will be introducing you to the new GIMP 2.8. So let's go ahead and take a look. This did come out recently. I believe it came out in May. I'm not sure. We're going to see how this thing looks and see what's what's new and yeah, basically. I know I haven't made a video in a while, so we'll be making uh, plenty of videos in the coming few days. So, uh, GIMP startup right here, we already have, uh, you're going to see a new design here when it comes up. If it doesn't stay blank. By the way, I'm running on a on a Windows, so um, I apologize for the dock and the uh, configuration of the screen if it bothers you. And if you get confused, my apologies, but it should be easy to follow. I don't know why this is taking forever. Usually, there we go. That is the new design for GIMP 2.8. Very modern. And we're going to see that uh, everything in the, in the new GIMP is kind of modern. So, let's just do this for now. This is how the old GIMP looked like. And one of the new things that they have in GIMP 2.8 is now, remember when you had like a bunch of images open? And it was really hard to go from like image to image to image. Well, right now we have something that's, if you go to Windows, they have a new single window mode, which is just like Photoshop. This is how Photoshop looks. We have the toolbox on the left side, your layers on the right side. And other uh, um, options here, like brushes and, and stuff like that, and paths. So they did try to make a lot like Photoshop. Um, they definitely have improved it a lot. We can see on the left side we have the new modern sliders now. This new widget of sliders. Before we used to have um, the, the little circle where you drag from left to right. Now you can actually uh, write percentages and exact amounts for each option. Or you can just slide. So let's go ahead and show you something with... Uh, with something, that, something, that, something, that, something that's new in this uh, game 2.8 that really helps people who have a lot of images open. I find this awesome, really perfect, perfect for me because I usually have a lot of images open. Sorry, I'm getting confused here. Um, where's pictures? There's pictures, and let's just go over here. Boom. I know these aren't the best pictures that I created. I made these like four years ago, maybe, maybe more. <clears throat> and we're just going to open three. Alright, so we have three images open right now. Now, one of the things that's, that's new in, in GIMP 2.8, at the top here, we have all three images. Now, before, before uh, in, the, in the old GIMP, GIMP 2.7, you had to go from image to image and move all your windows around. Now, it's very easy. They've basically made GIMP 2.8 a lot easier to use. The interface is much more user-friendly, and everything is just uh, improved and modernized. So that's something new that we have. We also have something new that is the, uh, the brushes. We have now angles. You can now make brushes and draw in angles. Before, you used to have to... Let me show you an example. Say I wanted to make a red line. Well, it's not going to be a line. Whatever this. Now, say I wanted to draw this in a different direction or uh, transform it or rotate it or something like that. Before, we used to have to make a new layer and then use that layer to rotate it and everything. Now, all we have to do is change the angle if we change the angle just we can see there are different types of strokes now obviously th 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 this brush is not the best brush to, uh, to uh, show the example of this but you can see that there are some changes if we use this uh, star right here let's change the angle 
Uh, you can't see a difference here. You can see a difference with uh, this brush though, the one that I showed you. As you can see here, there's different sizes of the brushes. You're basically just turning the brushes and flipping them. Instead of having to rotate them and transform them with uh, these tools right here and scale them, you can now just use the angle and the angle ratio and even the size here to change that. Before you had to use all these tools up here, now you have angles and everything else. So that's something new definitely. We also have layers being grouped now. Before we just had we just had layers stacked on top of each other uh, everywhere. So for all the people who like to uh, design with a lot of layers, they are not going to be grouped for you. So that's something good. We also have in the filters some new foos. And what else do we have new? We also have a new export function just like Photoshop has. Before we had to go save as. Now all you got to do is go to export and you pick the file type you want all images and have all the file types here very similar to Photoshop as you can see they've tried to make it a lot like Photoshop they've also added new brushes here now some of these brushes are mine but um, they have added new brushes if you have the default again without any added brushes that you have or you made or you downloaded then you will see there are new brushes uh, another new thing they have here is obviously this is new here and basically they've added a lot of new options under each of these tools a lot more to do with each tool a lot more to configure with each tool but one of the things that is new that is completely new is the cage transform now let me just go and uh, control Z all this which is undo basically what the cage tool does is it increases the size or decreases the size or just basically uh, just changes a part of the image before you had to go make several layers say you have say you have this image here and you, you just want to enlarge the head you would have to make two layers and then erase everything except for the head so you can enlarge the head now instead of having have to make duplicate layers you can just use the cage tool make your dots around it like that now obviously this is not going to look perfect since this is just a demonstration and you can just move this like that oops like that and there you go I believe it. yeah enter and it works now you can just go use your smudge tool here oops too big of a size you can just use your smudge tool here your blur tool here to uh, fix this up here and this is just demonstration, so I'm not going to make it perfect. But basically, the cage tool helps you manipulate parts of an image be, uh, much more easier than before, where you had to duplicate layers to um, enlarge images or anything like that, or you had to use the select tool. Now you can just use the cage tool. But other than that, uh, GIMP has GIMP is just basically improved in general. is more modernized, has a new tool, some new foos, a new way it looks. You know, layer stacking, uh, just it's just been improved a little bit. Uh, there's not, I don't want to say there's a lot of new features. There are some new features, and if you find more features, go ahead and put them in the comments, let everyone know, including myself. But these are all the features that I found so far that are new and that I've read about online. So I think I've pretty much covered everything. Uh, if you'd like to uh, see more of my videos, I have uh, other videos on GIMP tutorials, and I'll probably be using uh, GIMP 2.8 for more design tutorials. So if you uh, if you like this video, go ahead and press like. Uh, you can uh, favorite it, or you can subscribe along with other subscribers. Thank you for all the subscribers that I have right now. I appreciate the views. And thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And this is GSMA Smart, and I'll be back soon. you think. Don't go anywhere.